Hi guys, it is an unbelievably spectacularly gorgeous summer day here in the end times in the former paradise of South Austin, Texas, where I am hiding out from the Christmas tree lot from hell on this gorgeous Friday, December 1st. For you fit fetishists, you can see all my my fire ant stings all over my foot uh, going barefooted in December where the fire ants are enjoying this beautiful summer day in paradise. So it being Friday, of course, this is when I bring you my now two-part ecological meltdown roundup rant where I simply open my email box to find out how we are so fucked on the first day of December 2017. And uh, so part one, I'm gonna go visit my number one favorite doomsday roundup of the week. If I can untangle myself from this little dog's leash. We're gonna go over to mongabay.com. That's not that you're not gonna fall. We're going to go over to mongabay.com for a romp around a collapsing planet and then we will come back in part two to view some other doomsday roundups. Take it away, Mongabay, what is on your mind? Uh, <clears throat> they're asking, could you please donate $10 in support of Mongabay's work? I think I can. I think I'm going to send our friends at Manga Bay, $10 for Christmas. Anyway, let me get out uh, my appropriate buttons and polar bears and whatnot. Okay, Indonesians race to save their disappearing lakes before it's too late. Uh, <clears throat> 17 lakes in the Southeast Asian nation are in critical condition. One of them, Lake Limboto, is shrinking rapidly and could disappear entirely by 2025. Oh shit, Sherlock. But don't worry, President Joko Widodo is on the case. Okay. I don't have time to get into this red, this R-E-D-D -D rant, this, some, this program, something to do with the United Nations saving the planet by letting planet eaters eat part of the planet if they would just save another part of the planet. I anyway, uh, I love it when they ask a question in a headline at Manga Bay, the question this time being carbon dreams, I would call it carbon pipe dreams, can red, can red save a Yosemite sized forest in Madagascar? There you go. I think we all know the question, can red save a forest in Madagascar? There is one thing to save a forest in Madagascar get the fucking humans out of the forest. Okay, if red means getting humans out of the forest, yes, it can. <clears throat> anyway, here is uh, their spin on all of this, this stuff over the, the elephant uh, trophy hunting uh, debacle going on with T Donald Trump flip-flopping back and forth. Uh, I would, uh, so, <laughs> did you realize that while all of this shit was going down, our good old, uh, of horseman of the apocalypse, uh, Interior Department Secretary Ryan Zinke announced the establishment of the International Wildlife Conservation, Conservation Council 
who has as one of its goals will be to promote with the U.S. public the, quote, economic benefits that result from U.S. citizens traveling abroad to trophy hunt. There you go. Uh, I, I'm not going to get in, in, into this debate. I'm actually a little bit on the fence about this whole trophy hunting thing. Uh, maybe I need to get a full rant, but now's not the time. Oh, so their interview of the week is with my Humpty Dumpty tribe hero, Margaret Atwood. It is a, uh, it's an audio. They do, a Manga Bay does a, a podcast each week, and their guest this week is Margaret Atwood. If you don't know uh, Margaret Atwood and her Oryx and Crake trilogy uh there you go uh you need to check out margaret uh, okay let's see all right <clears throat> extreme concern new report gives glimpse into the scale of the kalimantan bird trade more than 25,000 birds from nearly 150 species, including many on the brink of extinction, were found in this recent raid at hundreds of shops all across Indonesian Borneo. Oh, shit, Sherlock. Uh, the the uh, researchers are calling for stronger law enforcement in Indonesian Borneo to protect endangered species. Warning, warning, bullshit alert. Speaking of endangered species, how many billions of pangolins used to be on the planet? Now we have an, another, good lord, what is this, about 800 pounds of pangolin scales worth about a million dollars found in this raid in Malaysia being exported to Hong Kong. Is, is this like every week for the past eight years I've been reading about uh, all, all of this stuff. Uh, we have a, an ad from World Wildlife Fund going along the side of my Manga Bay ad. My Manga Bay thing. How, uh, anyway, I've already done a World Wildlife Fund rant last week. Okay, here is the... Let me get the polar bear out. Let me get NSS the polar bear. For the story of the week, tropical deforestation is getting bigger. <coughs> tropical deforestation is getting bigger, study finds. No shit, Sherlock. An analysis of satellite data reveals the proportion of tropical deforestation comprised of medium large and very large clearings increased between 2001 and 2012. No shit, Sherlock. Sounds like they're talking about pizzas. These larger clearing sizes are generally attributed to industrial agriculture, such as palm oil production. No shit, hmm. Sherlock. South America and Southeast Asia had the biggest increases. No shit, Sherlock. Okay. Yes, I, I, I got a lot on my plate at the Christmas tree lot. So, next to that story, see if anybody out there, all of you eco-Nazis in training, learning how to navigate to the doomosphere. Okay, 
draw the dots between the last story I just read and this story. Let me get out NSS, the polar bear. Among global corporations, efforts on deforestation lag. No shit. Sherlock. I mentioned this on Monday. This is Manga Bay's spin on it. A recent report found that out of 201 companies, 201, I guess, global corporations, a mere 13% surveyed have adopted zero net deforestation policies. No shit, not Sherlock. Oh, shit. Okay, adopting zero deforestation policies is a critical step in stopping global forest loss. Detected. Take precautions. But the adoption of zero deforestation policies by a few big companies like the McDonald's Corporation has not had a major trickle-down impact. No shit, Sherlock. Dee, 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 dee. Okay. What is going on? Remember that big-ass uh, dam rupture down in Brazil a couple of years ago? Well, we now have 21 planet eaters under the gun. The Fundal Dam rupture, the largest environmental disaster in Brazil's history. Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. The largest environmental disaster in Brazil's history is Brazilian President Michael Tamer. Just so you understand that. Uh, who's like the Brazilian version of the largest environmental disaster in the United in the history of the United States, which would be Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, what, what, other than that problem, okay. The Fundal Dam rupture unleashed 50 million tons of industrial waste from the world's largest iron mine. Uh, killing 19 people in a flood of toxic mud that contaminated 500 miles of the Dose River. And I guess so they're going to blame this on 21 mining executives. A just released study on the Dose River's water quality reveals that nearly 90% of test sites demonstrate bad or terrible water quality. The terrible designation indicates that the water is currently unfit for human consumption. I like these real classy scientific categories of water quality in Brazil, the terrible category. <clears throat> From industrial waste in rivers to plastic in the ocean. Plastic in the ocean smells like junk food to hungry anchovies. There you go. Uh, the odors of plastic pieces coated in algae, you know, so the, the, the little pieces of plastic seep down there and get covered with algae. And so what do you think the fish do? Uh, they go into a vigorous feeding frenzy. And by eating the algae covered plastic, uh, anchovies and other bait fish in turn become toxic to the animals who eat them, which in turn become toxic to the people who eat the animals, who eat the anchovies, who eat the algae-covered plastic. 
if you've ever seen these read the story a fly went by you might understand uh, the collapse of a planet okay Let's skip over that bullshit okay here is the most current list of the world's top 25 most endangered primates. I'm not sure I see humans on this. Uh, this is the latest Primates in Peril report. Um, <clears throat> it sh shows that 62% of the more than 700 species of apes, lemurs, monkeys, and other primates, I guess including humans, are currently facing th serious threats to their survival. No shit, Sherlock. 42%, 42% of this planet's primates, again, I don't know if humans are on the list, are listed as endangered or critically endangered. There you go. And, uh, we have the Bornean orangutan making its first ever appearance on the list. Uh, we have eight other species from Asia, five species, I guess, from Latin America, five new species from Africa, and six lemurs from Madagascar joining the list of critically endangered primates. No shit, Sherlock. Okay, here's this story about geothermal energy taking down a planet. I have a mosquito buzzing in my ear. Probably uh, some dengue fever, Zika virus mosquito out here in December. Wow. Are you ready, Sherlock? In Peru, in Peru, illegal mining devastates forests in the Amazon region. No shit, Sherlock. D D. This is the very place that I was talking about, the Madre de Dios uh, region. Uh, in Peru, the very spot I was talking about and reporting on in Manga Bay in 2009, the same story. In 2017, uh, anyway, the more things change, the more they stay the same. It's time for a button change here. Indonesia to kick off 10 year plan to save its critically endangered helmeted hornbill. That was bullshit. Yes. The helmeted hornbill has been driven to the brink of extinction by poaching for its distinctive scarlet beak, which is three times as valuable per pound as elephant ivory. I'm sure the Indonesian government, I'm sure Joko Widodo is on his way to the rescue. Let's see. Hmm. What is going on in Hawaii? Long term droughts in Hawaii are throttling, throttling growth in Hawaiian forest. No shit. Sherlock. Yes. D D D. More stuff from Peru. Uh, here's one on shark fishing. But we're gonna end up. I uh, I I can't tell. I honestly. Oh, I'm just gonna wind up part one of this rant. I honestly don't know. Sometimes I mean I, I mean. 
Rhett Butler, the, the head of Manga Bay, is one of my Humpty Dumpty tribe heroes, and he says he's actually going to allow me to interview him in late January. Looking forward to that. I honestly don't know how ironic Rhett was being by running uh, this last story of uh, this week's roundup in his newsletter. Okay, you, you decide, is Rhett Butler being ironic? in this unintentionally, darkly hilarious story titled, Culture Keeps Cattle Ranching Going in the Brazilian Amazon. No shit, Sherlock. A recent study finds that financial incentives to move people away from cattle ranching in the Brazilian Amazon don't address the cultural and logistical hurdles to changing course, even though ranchers could earn four times as much money per acre farming soy, or up to 12 times as much farming fruits and vegetables, many stick with cattle as a result of cultural values. There you go. I mean, what, what exactly is, uh, is Manga Bay suggesting in this story that it, it, it's a good thing to stop cattle ranching in the Brazilian Amazon and move to soy farming? You know, at least with the goddamn beef cattle, uh, there, there's usually a few trees, uh, you, you know, on an acre of land. I mean, uh, the cattle need, need a couple of trees to get out of that hot tropical sun. So uh, there you go. Let, let's save the Brazilian Amazon by getting people to move from cattle ranching to soy farming. So instead of the beef eaters taking down the planet, it can be the vegans eating their tofu taking down the planet. Although, of course, guys, all you vegans, uh, I understand that the vast majority of the soy goes to feeding chickens and probably pigs and tilapia, uh, all of which this old eco-Nazi eats. Uh, so I don't eat beef because of the threat to the Amazon jungle and the planet, but I do eat chicken raised on soy that does more damage to the Amazon jungle than the fucking beef cow did. I've got to sometimes, um, I'll have to go in and really look into my consumer and lifestyle choices to save the planet, but since I have made the choice to sell Christmas trees to clueless fucking morons for the Austin Optimist Club, I'm going to have to wrap this rant up because I still have part two, and we're going to look over at some more of my daily emails to see how we are so fucked. You got one more rant to sit through, little dog little Christmas elf. Be right back at you with that. Bye, guys. Did you shake your hat off? Did you shake that hat off like that?